We constituted this conference around a theme, the humanities improvised. And we were trying to think about the ways in which the study of the humanities, which is a serious study, to think about that in relation to arts practices, whether it's jazz, whether it's in the form of uh, new digital arts, puppetry and design, and to bring all of those energies together into one room, to bring scholarly interests, ideas of study, attention, reading, into play with those art forms that invent and create. There's something very special about having this community of international humanities scholars thinking with us at a moment of the emergence of the Centre for Humanities Research at UWC really coming into its own. The university has been on the periphery of the city because of the histories of apartheid and exclusion and it's the moment in which the university is really finding its place um, inside a global stage. Very exhilarating. This is the first time it was, uh, it was staged as, a, as an event in Africa. It's actually surreal uh, to be having a humanities conference at the Castle of Good Hope. It's part of the project um, which uh, is how do we use the humanities to transform these spaces. It was like regenerating. It reminded me why I get up in the morning and do the work I do, what got me into it in the first place, and then it put me in touch with colleagues around the globe with things, who, ideas I'd never thought and approaches I'd never imagined. This conference, Improvising the Humanities, I think will be one of the best I've ever, the, the lineup looks like one of the best I've ever seen. We were very pleased with the opportunity to host two major exhibitions in this conference. One was called Athlone in Mind, and that's an exhibition that was curated by Kurt Campbell. The artist in residence uh, for the conference was Jane Alexander. And you know, many people know her from the work she did called The Butcher Boys, uh, which is housed in our National Gallery. But what she pulled out were works that had never been seen in South Africa before. They were staged for the first time in the stables of the, of the old castle. You know, all of those were not side shows to the conference. They were helping us to interject at various points and to think about the senses and how we awaken the senses. The CHCI conferences are always incredibly invigorating. The quality of the attendees, just getting to meet people from different humanity centers, but also from different disciplines. It's, um, it's just a, a wonderfully invigorating time. The talks today have been very compelling. Um, and I love the fact that the questions and ideas that you know, come out of the particular location of people here um, and those who work on Africa are so different from what we regularly encounter in the Global North. There were four major plenaries, five nine major plenary sessions. Uh, Isaac Julian did the uh, Srinivas uh, Aravamudan lecture. Uh, Srinivas was our past president of the CHCI and passed away about a year and a bit ago. Uh, so we thought we'd host an annual lecture in his name and in his honour, and Isaac Julian who was his friend. Well, my experience at the conference so far has been phenomenal in terms of being able to hear people like Homi Baba, later on to hear Gargi Spivak, and also it's been an honour to be able to be here at the conference at this pivotal time. Other speakers included Homi Baba, uh, and Gayatri Spivak, both luminaries in the post-colonial world. And for many of us growing up in the 1990s when we were students, those were the scholars we were reading. So it was great to have them both in the room. I was going to orchestrate an argument that would make the castle a space in which the arts intervene and which opened that castle to other ways of conceiving of these monuments without destroying everything. A sense of the future rather than a kind of despair of the past. I think it's quite strange that there aren't more exhibitions that run concurrently with conferences in the conventional sense. It's almost essential um, with this level of artists who don't see their artworks as um, separate to sort of intellectual struggles, but see their artworks as very much part of a, 
um, a move to create the conditions to find solutions uh, for the future with humanities right at the center. William Kentridge was of course the, the other artist that uh, did a superb just presentation and lecture. We then also had Jane Taylor who is a research chair in our center at UWC who did the wonderful performance with uh, the story of Kafka's ape, uh, Red Peter, and um, you know had this way of reinventing the, the lecture format and how you present a lecture. And then finally uh, we had the Murray who is the past director of the Society for the Humanities at Cornell University and who convenes one of the largest digital arts archives uh, in the world now. You know, we had a flourish of great minds in a, in, the, in a single space, all speaking about the arts and the humanities in ways that had, you know, that, had, that was fresh, new, that was not belabored by this idea that we are in perpetual crisis and demise and, and decline. Um, and that was completely enabling for us to think about what the future of the humanities looks like uh, after this conference. So each of those plenaries, I think, you know, it just got better and better along the way, but each of those were asking us to take one more step further ahead, to think ahead. And each of those moved the entire debate of the humanities ten steps forward. Uh, so those were the plenaries, and then we had some amazing um, sessions, panel discussions. Uh, my favorites were, of course, uh, Yala Kisukili, uh, who is a wonderful scholar, um, just wrote the most thoughtful book on Bergson on politics. That was a complete highlight for me to just listen to her speak and to sharpen our understanding of what we're doing in Africa. We had Francois Fuste, who's the maker of Dream of Shahrazad. Um, who is you know, now going to be my teacher as I take a class with him this week. Um, and and you know, several others who just you know, kept the conference ticking over. So if you think about those plenaries, they were you know, seismic shifts that they were offering us. What was connecting those seismic shifts were all these panel discussions that had been carefully orchestrated through the period of the conference to keep the, the, the momentum going. And then of course, how, you know, what a better way of introducing the conference than with Riza Kota and Derek Gripper uh, talking about, you know, the, conver uh, you know, the translation of the Kora onto, into guitar and thinking about, you know, how musical forms travel uh, and what that might mean uh, in the world today. It's a different temporality, a different rhythm and a different form of expressing imagination and bringing together artists, art makers, filmmakers, musicians, um, curators and humanities scholars into a closer conversation produces concepts that may not have been anticipated. Um, it brings different kinds of speculative approaches, of affective approaches and imaginative approaches into an adjacent conversation that is very close and that's extraordinarily productive, particularly at a time where our global kind of conjuncture, which is almost a normalization of a, a permanent state of war, seems to be so short of ideas to help us think ourselves out via the imagination into a different possibility. I think that the role of the humanities is to resist the instrumentalization of thinking, of turning thinking into being at the service of immediate needs, political, economic, technical, and to say in fact the way one's brain works and the way we understand the world doesn't fit into those reduced parameters. That there's a space of uncertainty, of doubt, of uh, irrationality through which we apprehend and make sense of the world. And if that is removed, we completely destroy a huge amount of what it is to be human. And so in the work it's specifically making a space for this and allowing strategies to emerge to work with uncertainty, recognition, not knowing what you're doing to achieve the final work of art. You know, we had a room full of very exciting people and in the audience, you know, some of the leading scholars in the world, um, Jim Chandler at Chicago University, uh, there were colleagues from India, uh, JNU, Delhi, uh, Prafula Kar, um, and so, you know, you couldn't have had a more purposeful meeting uh, and a more playful attempt at reinventing ourselves.